tell you. Something I... Well, something I wanted... Hello? Hello, Andy. Yes. I want to talk to you. No. I can't talk to you now. Who is it, Andy? It's important. I won't talk to you now. Do as you please. Three months that you've been away, something's happened. Something's happened. Marion, I've lost nearly everything we have in the world. Oh, you frightened me so, darling. I thought you were going to say that you'd fallen in love with another woman. So that's what you thought I was going to say. Marion, this may break us up, but. I can't go on without telling you something I should have told you three days ago on your return. All right, darling. What are you going to tell me? Well, shortly after you left for California with, with the boy, you remember? Well, the Rutherfords, you know the Rutherfords, dear, they, they gave a party. I was invited. I, I met a woman there. A woman? Yes, a clever woman. She talked well, danced well. I danced with her several times. She had seats for the opera the following night. I, she had no escort. She asked me to take her. I did. Two days later, she called me up. She had more seats for the theater. Would I take her? I did. We became friends. I spent my evenings with her at her apartment. Andrew. You don't really mean another woman. Yes. I can't believe it. Not 
a woman. It's the truth. Oh, Marion. Please, don't. But, Marion, please, listen to me. There's nothing to say. You've told me the whole story in one word. The beginning and the end. The end of us. But, Marion, you must hear me. You remember when you went away, I told you I couldn't help being lonesome without you. So you found another woman? No. A more beautiful woman? No. A more fascinating woman? No. Well, then what was she that she could take my place? She hasn't taken your place. Everything is over. When did you break with her? Immediately on your return. You haven't seen her since? Yes. Once. Why? Because it isn't so easy to get away from such a woman. You mean you still love her? No, no, I've never loved her. You've never loved her, and yet you... Now, Marion, when we were married, you were a businesswoman. As my secretary, you showed a keen insight into men. I showed a complete ignorance of men when I thought I'd found one who could be true. Well, at least you found one who has the courage to tell you that he hasn't been. Why are you still seeing her? Because she threatened to expose me to you. She squeezed every dollar out of me. Our money, our security, our property, practically all gone. So that's where you lost your money? Yes. And she has my note for $25,000. It's a personal note, Marion, drawn on the corporation. For that, I can go to prison. Prison? How did she manage to get so much money out of you? There's no limit to the ways that woman has of getting money out of men. There's only one way. Oh, no. No, she's not that kind. If she were, I'd have been on my guard. She's something... She's not vulgar. She's something far more expensive, far more dangerous to a man. She conducts a perfectly decent house. She allows some people, decent people, to play there. You understand? A gambling house? Yes. She runs this house so that her friends can play. That's how I lost my money. She does it all with such an air that she's dangerous to men like me. Andrew. Andrew, I, I don't know why I'm listening to you. Why is all this talk? How is it going to excuse the wrong that you've done me and my boy? Oh, Marion, please. Who is this woman? Do I know her? No. Does she know me? Has she ever met me? No, no. I, I only met her myself. Where few... does she live? 450 Park Avenue. 450 Park Avenue. What's her name? Vivian Hepburn. Vivian Hepburn. Oh, Marion, please. Marion, what? Vivian Hepburn. Won't you please say something to me? There's nothing to say. But, Marion, I'm not trying to excuse myself. I haven't any defense. How could you do this? I've only to me, told boy. you this because I couldn't bear to accept your love with a lie in my heart. Oh, I should have done it. Oh, Marion, what are you going to do? I don't know, Andrew. Will you remain my wife? No. I don't think so. But I'm so glad you had the courage to tell me the truth. Shall I tell your fortune, Judge? I'm a seventh daughter. No, thank you, Mrs. Davis. I have no superstitions. You love a woman? who will never love you, Judge. <laughs> and yet, this says you are lucky. <laughs> well, if it's a woman I think it is, I'll say he's lucky. <laughs> well, Dad! Yes? Pardon me. Are you calling me, Vivian? I will be long. Are you entertaining the ladies? Yes, I'm entertaining the ladies. I'm a good listener. <laughs> I'm waiting for a telephone call. I'll be down presently. Where does Vivian get her energy? She's on the go all day. And all night. It's wonderful to do things. Yes, but it depends on what one does. Oh, what difference does it make what one does, as long as one does? I was on the bench for six years, and I never had occasion to send a man to jail for doing nothing. <laughs> you don't know some of the men that I know, Judge. <laughs> well, you may not approve of all Vivian does, but you, like the others, haven't escaped her charm. I admit it. I'm even proud of it. I'd take Vivian out of the kind of life she lives if she'd let me. Oh, I wish I had the courage to live my own life. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I'm sorry to have been so long. I hope you two haven't been shocking the judge. Now, seeing me so often, I doubt that he has a shot left. <laughs> you actually look as if you had some sleep last night. 
I had three hours of it. Where's Mr. Tarlow this afternoon, Vivian? I miss him. I've been wondering. I just tried to get him on the telephone. Is Tarlow here every afternoon? But you may as well know the worst, Judge. Mr. Tarlow's a dangerous rival. Young. And a grand slam with the lady. <laughs> she isn't insinuating that I'm old, is she, Vivian? <laughs> I shouldn't put it past her, dear. But we know better. <laughs> isn't anyone coming in for a game this afternoon? I'm afraid not. Unless we can prevail upon the judge. Only billiards at ten cents a game. But how about tonight? That husband of mine is going to the club and Amos and Andy won't be on the radio all evening. Tell me, will there be a game tonight? Sorry, but I'm going to the theater. Oh, dear, and I feel so lucky today. I have an hour to spare. And if you feel so lucky, I have a thousand to spare. Oh, splendid. May we, Vivian? Yes, do. <laughs> Go right to the card room. But since you feel so lucky, don't let me lose over a thousand dollars. Because you won't get me, <laughs> don't you be so sure. Call my lucky number. Why do you do it, Vivian? I wonder why women were made. Women were made to keep men's noses to the grindstone. No, to destroy what man creates. Two-thirds of the energy put forth by men is destroyed by women. Such as these that just walked into the card room. Oh, thank Dad for not including me. <laughs> You're the chief destroyer. You're destroying yourself. I'm still whole, not a part of me missing. All the Vivian I used to know is missing. <sighs> what fun do you get out of running a place like this? More fun than I ever thought I'd have. But what's the matter with my place? It's my home. Is there anything wrong, indecent? No. Well, what? I mean the gambling. This is no gambling house. The only playing I allow is for my friends to pass an hour. Or a night. And you gamble not only for money, but you gamble with men's lives. I like to live dangerously. Money and love being the most dangerous, the most precious things, I gamble in them. Oh, I wish you'd let me alone. <laughs> to go on wrecking lives. Now, whose life have I wrecked? Andrew Darcy, for one. Oh, Andrew. When I first met Andrew, I was sure he was my man. I fell in love with him. He turned out to be a nightmare. And now I'm free to choose the next man. I'm sorry for you, Vivian. But I'm still more sorry for Darcy. He's a nice chap, and I understand he has a charming wife and child. <laughs> well, he'd have something nice to go back to. I want you to get away from all this. How? By marrying you? Even that would be better. Well, Dan, I've told you not to waste your time, and I can only repeat it. I think I found the right man. I'm desperately in love with him. Guy Tarlow? Oh, yes. Is he a married man, too? I don't know. If he is, he's got the good sense not to boast about it. At least he hasn't brought any references from his wife. For your own sake, let us hope that he isn't. For his sake, Dan, I'd consent to go even to the altar or to the gutter. If you do go to the altar, I will be there to congratulate you. If you go to the gutter, either way, I will always be your friend. Thanks, Dan. I'm grateful for that. Small favors graciously received. Hello, Judge. Hello, Tom. How are you, Vivian? Well, Judge, you're holding court or making court? Both. Good. Hello, guys. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and watch the gambling. Oh, don't go, Judge. You're giving me an unfair advantage. Mr. Tarlow, I find that I often win out by giving my rival a shade the advantage. Did you ring me this morning? Yes, you might have answered the phone. Oh, I was sound asleep, dead to the world. I rang to tell you that I hated you. Well, I'm glad you didn't get there. So am I, because I'd much rather tell it to your face. Well, what have I done now? Flirted, flirted, flirted. Oh, three times flirted. Yes, you made me so jealous last night I could have killed you in that Mrs. Wheeler. Well, I was trying to make a friend for you. For me? She likes her wheel. She can afford to lose. But if you don't like it, it's out of my life. I hope that satisfies you. Oh, if you mean it. Oh, Guy. If you break my heart, if you disappoint me, I... Well, why do you talk like that? Because you're the first man to, with the ability to make me miserable. And you're going to be the last. If you're playing with me, if you're insincere, I... Well, well you'll have a funeral on your hands. Mine? No, mine. Well, if you ever get to that point, don't leave me out. No, then kiss me. Excuse me, Miss Hepburn. A young lady to see you. Well, who is it? The new secretary sent by Miss Janet. Oh, yes, sure in. 
If you'll pardon me, I'll join the others in the card. Oh, no, no, stay here. I want your opinion of her. I don't know anything about secretaries. I can judge a woman's face efficiency, but not her business efficiency. I don't want to see her. You're Miss Arden? Yes, Marion Arden. Mr. Janet sent you? Yes, Miss Hepburn. You are Miss Hepburn? Yes, I'm Miss Hepburn. Well, how do I impress you? Very well. You'd like to be with me? Very much. May I ask how I impress you? Well, you have looks, but uh, have you brains? I hope so. You'll need brains to handle me. I'm sure of that. Oh, uh, won't you sit down? Oh, this is Mr. Tarlow. Have you done secretarial work before? Oh, yes. For a man? For a woman. I prefer women. You don't like men, Miss Arden? I don't like to work for them. I think men should work for women. <laughs> we agree on that. Well, what woman did you work for? A widow. Gay? Gay and gray. Oh. Would you like to look at my references? Married? No. Separated. Still better. Divorced. Divorced. Splendid. But why did you divorce your husband? He wouldn't work for me. I see. He loved you so much you preferred to stay at home rather than go to work. Oh, no. He loved somebody else so much he'd rather stay away from home. Then he did work. Well, he worked hard enough. But with somebody else, you deserve a better fate with your looks. Well, you see, Miss Hepburn, not every girl can make a business of her looks. You no. Know, that requires special genius. I'm afraid I haven't that sort of genius. How do you find my references? Very good. And my former secretary thinks you're a wonder. Did she tell you about your duties here? Yes, uh, that is in a general way. Well, they're very complex. Oh, Guy, will you excuse us for a few minutes? Please. Gladly. Well, I do hope you get the position, Miss Arden. Thanks. It'll be nice to have you around here all the time. <clears throat> My error. Charming man, Mr. Tarlow, isn't he? Yes. Why, don't you like him? I wouldn't rave about him. Well, I hope I haven't offended you. No, no, no. Go right along. Dislike Mr. Tarlow. And now, Miss Arden, you'll find this a very peculiar home. You'll see a lot of men make love to me. I don't see anything so peculiar about that. <laughs> and you'll see me make love to a lot of men. But I don't mean it. You don't mean it? No. Except in one instance. In one instance? I hope he isn't a married man. Why? Nothing, only it's such an annoyance to love a married man. Have you ever loved a married man? Yes, but he was married to me. Ooh, <laughs> you are clever. You say your husband wasn't good to you? Yes. Oh, what a fool he must have been. Yes, he was a fool. Well, don't you worry. You'll meet a lot of nice men here. Have you ever played cards? Oh, yes. Well, many of my friends come here, people of established position to play. Uh, gamble a little. Often I need another hand. I may have to call on you. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Hepburn, but I haven't any money to lose. Oh, I'll pay your losses. Oh, I shall enjoy that so much if you pay my losses. Do you know, I think you're clever and pretty enough to assist me in many ways. I shall want you to dine at the same table with me, dance at the same parties, do everything I do except fall in love with the same man. Any man who loves you couldn't possibly be interested in me. Men's tastes are very diversified. True. You know, Miss Arden, I like you. I like you very much. Then I may have the position? Oh, not yet, my dear girl, not yet. Your references will have to be confirmed, and you'll have to be approved by Mr. Dorsey. Mr. Dorsey? Why must he like me? He pays the bills. I thought you were unmarried. I am. But there's always a man to pay the bills. It may be a husband, a father, a brother, or something still better, a lover. Is a lover better than a husband? 
Well, some women think it a good plan to have both. Well, I could pay my own bills if I want to, but what were men made for? To work for the wrong woman. There's only one kind of a wrong woman. A woman who doesn't work a man right. Uh, would you mind taking a test? I think I have a notebook here. Oh, I have my own. May I sit here? Uh, yes. Send this to my lawyer, Mr. James McLaughlin, 1450 Broadway. Darling Jim, I was served with a summons to appear before your client. I haven't the time. Please let me off. I know you will. Affectionately yours. There are these bills. Let me see. How many copies of a letter will I need for these? Two. Two. Dear sir, the bills that I have charged to Mr. Andrew Dorsey up to the first of the month must be paid by him. I'll not pay them. Pa pardon me, Miss Hepburn. I have up as far as Mr. Andrew Dorsey. Yes, to Mr. Andrew Dorsey. must be paid by him. I'll not pay them. The order that he countermanded does not apply to bills up to date. Yours truly. Now, this one to Mr. Andrew Dorsey, 28 Pine Street, New York City. 27 Pine Street. 27 Pine Street. Dearest Andy, I rang you up three times yesterday but was unable to get you. Your note is due. If I don't hear from you within 24 hours, I shall send your note to my bank for collection. I know you don't want this to happen. So please call and kiss your darling and bring the cash with you. Love and kisses, Viv. Oh, you'd better let me hear that last one. Dearest Andy, I rang you up three times yesterday but was unable to get you. Your note is due. If I don't hear from you within the next 24 hours, I shall send it to my bank for collection. I know you don't want this to happen, so please call and kiss your darling and bring the cash with you. Love and kisses. Viv. Splendid, not an error. Well, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. I, I just have a little headache. May I come in? Come in, Guy. Your room is at the top of the stairs to the right, Miss Arden. You'll find a typewriter and some paper. That was Miss Janet's room. Please go up and type the letters. I'll be up shortly and glance at them. To the right? Yes, and then you can mail them. Thank you. Well, you two seem to suit each other. I don't think I'll find it difficult to break Miss Arden into our little family. No, no difficulty breaking into our little family. I'm only afraid she might break it up. Breaking up families is something I know nothing about, Mr. Tarlow. I'm not so sure I can't teach you even that. I'm sure you can. Well, what do you think of her? Her face not much, her head considerably. I'm surprised, she's so pretty. Well, not every pretty woman appeals to me. I hope not. Next to you, no other woman stands a chance anyway. What's the matter, can't you take a joke? Hello, Dorsey. Hello, Carlo. Vivian, I'd like to see you alone for a minute, if you don't mind. Oh, Guy, will you please call up Miss Arden's references to see if she's all right? You'll find the lady's telephone in this letter. I don't know the lady. Well, it won't be the first time you've called up an unknown woman. No, in fact, it's a great thrill. Well, go and have your thrill, old darling. Thanks, Mama. Well, Andy, you've come back. Yes, I got your messages. I thought you would. I hope you've come prepared to take up your notes. No, I haven't. Oh, you haven't? I've told you before that I'm broke. You can't get blood out of a stone. You'll just have to wait. I don't believe you. What's more, there are bills you refuse to pay. You'll pay them, every one of them. My first duty is to see that my wife and child have a roof over their heads. <laughs> Now, what are you going to do? I'll show you what I'm going to do. Send your note to my bank for collection. They'll have a sweet time collecting it. Oh, they'll collect it all right. They know how to handle Welchers. I'm not Welching. I'm just asking for time. Hello, Dorothy. Hello, Judge. He's refused to pay my... What's the matter? Vivian insists on payment of a note I've given her, and I can't pay it. You'll pay it all right, or it goes to my bank for collection. Excuse me, Judge, while I write a letter to accompany this. Vivian. Vivian, you...
You think she'll go through with it, Judge? You know Vivian. Can't you stop her? I'll pay it when I can. Did you tell her that? Yes, I told her. But she doesn't believe me. You see, I made the mistake of telling her that I didn't really care for her. Vivian doesn't like to have men beat her at her own game. Forest Hills, 113. Beat her? I've never beaten her at any game. She can outthink me any day. Well, uh, yes, 113. She's dining with me tonight. I'll talk to her then. But I don't think it'll do any good. Thanks, Judge. Hello, Frida. Yes, this is Mr. Dorsey. Uh, will you tell Mrs. Dorsey that I've been detained? I'll be a little late for dinner. What's that? Gone? Gone where? Oh, I see. All right. Now, please don't make a scene. But what on earth are you doing here? I'm just about to become your lady's secretary. Her secretary? I've taken my maiden name and you've met me here for the first time. Her secretary? But how did you manage that? Well, I made it my business to meet her former secretary. She wanted to get married but lacked funds. So I paid her a year's salary to give up this position and recommend me for it. What? You... I sold some jewelry to do it. Your Agnes? Oh, uh, yes. Will you please mail these right away in Miss Hepburn's orders? Yes, Miss. But you surely don't intend to stay here. Oh, yes, I do. How long? As long as it suits my purpose. What is your purpose? That's my secret. And if you meant any of the things that you said to me the other night, then you'll keep my identity to yourself and be ready to help me if I need you. But, Marion, I can't Ms. let you... Arden. Now, are you going to do as I ask? Miss Miss Alden. Miss Alden. Oh, oh, yes, Miss Hepburn. Did you mail the letters? Just this very second. Oh, Andy, you're still here. Miss Arden, this is Mr. Dorsey. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Dorsey? How do you do? Ah, there you are. Where have you been? You'd be surprised. I've been talking to many widows. That long? It took me a half an hour to get on the phone. And once she heard my voice, she positively refused to ring off. <laughs> you mean you refused to ring off? Oh, dear, no. Before she told me a word about Miss Arden, she told me all about herself. How she looked, how many love affairs she'd had, how many husbands she'd buried, and her last balance in the bank. All very interesting. After an hour's conversation, she told me Miss Arden was a charming girl, honest, efficient, punctual, glad to recommend her. In fact, I recommend her myself. Oh, Andy, as you know, Miss Janet left me, and Miss Arden has applied to the position. What do you think of her? Why, uh, she looks all right. Why, isn't she beautiful? Yes, yes, beautiful. Well, if you approve of her, she shall have the position. Now, what do you say? Well, by all means, let her have it. Thank you so much, Mr. Dorsey. The position is yours, Miss Arden. Thank you. Mr. Dorsey is a frequent visitor here. Anything you can do for him, he will know how to appreciate. Oh, I shall be delighted to do anything for Mr. Dorsey. Thank you so much. Don't forget me. <coughs> well, who's going to take me to dinner? You know, you should take me to dinner, Miss Arden, for okaying your references. Guy, go home, dress, and come right back. I thought you were having dinner with the judge. I didn't want to crowd the party. Well, I'm going home to dress. <coughs> Goodbye, Miss Arden. Goodbye. I'll see you presently. I see. Oh, excuse me, Andy. I must go and dress. <laughs> Oh, why don't you take Miss Arden out to dinner? I'm sure you'll enjoy it. <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> Your lady. Your lady. Your lady is trying to arrange an affair between you and your wife. Now you're only good enough for your wife. Well, you told me to come back here and stay on good terms with her. And now she's sending my note to the bank. It'll never reach the bank. Why not? Because it was lost in the mail. The note is in this envelope. 
she gave it to me, to mail. Now, Andy, don't bother about dinner. Please go home and take care of the baby. Tell Mr. Davis. If you would have played that. Hello, Mr. French. Hello, Judge. Why are you here alone? I'm not alone. Mr. Davis is entertaining me. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. French is in there. Yes, I know my wife is in there. Losing. Too bad. I don't see what gives you the idea she's losing. If she had been winning, she would have gone home hours ago. Just 15 minutes more, she said. Two hours ago. <laughs> Why don't you take her home? If I took her home now, I'd have to pay all her losses. I prefer to lose my night's sleep. <laughs> Come in, Mrs. Davis. Is my baby asleep? <laughs> Can't you hear him? Is he asleep? <laughs> don't wake him. Oh, no. Bless him. Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Here, here, Davis. Wake up. It's time for baby's bottle. <laughs> Where am I? Where's my wife? She just stepped into the card room. You mean to say we're still at Miss Hepburn's? Yes. What time is it? <laughs> it's after two. After two? <laughs> Baby misses his crib. Oh, gracious, I've got to get the off to nine o'clock. This is a fine age we're living in. The women have it all to themselves. You said it. You know, in the old days, the women used to be afraid of us. Now, they can legislate us right out of existence. You said it, French. Now, now, don't blame the ladies. They're just hitting back at us men. You know, Judge, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if someday the women passed a law Making prohibition apply only to men. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, French. <laughs> look, Vicky, look. I've just held this hand. Three aces and two kings. Oh, fine, dear. How much did you win? I lost $500. You were... Oh, <laughs> oh baby. <laughs> look at the hand I just held. Four deuces. Good. Beat Mrs. French's hand? Yes. How much did you win? I lost 800. Oh. <laughs> what? Vivian held four nights. Come along, let's see if we can't do a little better. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Mrs. Bennett. They're going back in for more fun. Hello, everybody. Hello, Dorothy. Hello. Hello, Judge. You going to play? You better stay out of there, Dorothy. Vivian's having a great run of luck tonight. Have you ever seen her when she didn't? It isn't all luck. Vivian has a brain. You're quite right, Judge. I guess it isn't all luck. Say, I'm going to make my wife go home. Come on, let's assert our authority. Wait I'm... a minute. Huh? Aren't you afraid? Sure, I'm afraid. But if we don't get away with it, we'll say we were just kidding. Oh, Come right. on. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen you around here for quite a while, Dorothy. And you probably could never guess the reason, Judge. I hoped you had had enough. I have. A great plenty. Then why go back to the game? Well, I thought I might try a new game, Judge. See if I can change my luck. Ma Mr. Dorsey. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Judge Perry. Yes? Miss Hepburn wants you in the card room. She does? Thank you very much. Haven't you had enough of being this woman's secretary? Give me a chance. You had three months. I've only had three weeks. Uh, 
Andy, did you destroy the note? No, I can't let you do a thing like that. Oh, you can't? I suppose you're going to mortgage your entire future to pay us. Have you any interest in my future, Mary? Well, I... What now? Well, you have a son to think of. He deserves a little consideration. I'm going home. I haven't got to get some sleep. What's the matter, Mr. Davis? Can't you get your wife to go home? No, and I don't give a hoot if she never comes home. Bolton, where's my hat and coat? Yes, sir. Oh, wait, Mr. Davis. If you hurry, you'll catch him. He's right out in the hall. Oh, my lost little joke, my baby. Oh, we'll call him baby darling. It'll be all right. He is a darling. Good night, Sylvia. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Dawson. Good night. 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 <laughs> I guess the money you've left. Oh. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Mr. Dawson. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Come along, baby darling. Good night. Better luck next time. Yes. Yeah. Good night. Marion, I was very much pleased with the way you handled your table tonight. I'm so glad I pleased you. And you engage another secretary to do the drudgery. You will do only social work. And you'll be well paid for it. Thank you. You're a wonderful woman, Marion. But don't fall in love with Mr. Dorsey. Why not? He's a married man. Oh, is he? Is it wrong to love a married man? Uh, yes, unless he's handsome and rich. Then it's quite all right. But then it's your patriotic duty. <laughs> but unfortunately, Mr. Dorsey hasn't even a wife to recommend him. She's deserted him. Oh, now that's too bad. <laughs> By the way, Andy, have you heard from the truant? No, I haven't. <laughs> Serves you right for telling her. <laughs> Imagine telling about one unimportant little affair. <laughs> only one? <laughs> well, I'm sure Mr. Dorsey had only one. And I'll swear he never kissed the other woman without thinking of his wife. <laughs> Did the other woman resent it? Oh, hated him for it, I expect. <laughs> then he really loved his wife. And not the other woman. Apparently. Your wife must be a remarkable woman, Mr. Dorsey. She must have something. I don't know what. I've never met her. Neither have I. <laughs> I should love to meet your wife. And if I do, I'll present her to you. <laughs> Won't you please come in and play a game of billiards with me? Everybody is gone. Oh, you poor dear. I forgot all about you. Thank Why, you. Why, of course I'll play with you. I didn't think Let's you might. Let's have some billiards. Got kind of room for my girl. I seem to be quite a success with your lady. Hmm. That's more than you are. I don't know what you expect to get here, but you'll never gain any advantage over her. No? Marion, why do you want to stay here? Is it just to humiliate me? I have no wish to humiliate you, Andrew. I'm here on business of my own. After all, when a girl leaves her husband, she must make a living somehow. <sighs> and perhaps there's another attraction. You found one here. Why shouldn't I find one too? Do you mean a man? Is it the judge? No, it isn't the judge. Nice as he is. Is it Tarlo? Perhaps. It is Tarlo. Does he know that you're my wife? Of course not. And you won't tell him. Why not? Because. It'll hurt my case. It's certainly no recommendation. Where I made my mistake was in telling you the truth. But, Marion, I love you. You're mine. And I'm not going to have Tarlow or any other man making love to you. I didn't say it was Mr. Tarlow. I like him. I like Guy very much. And I think he likes me. But the subject's never been discussed between us. Oh, pardon me, Dorsey, but Vivian would like to see you in the card room, play some billiards. Won't you do? Well, I've played till now. Why, why won't Miss Arden do? Well, because I want to play with Miss Arden in here, and it isn't billiards either. So do I. Yes, but you've monopolized Miss Arden all evening. I didn't know you liked her so much. I didn't know you liked her so much. 
Jealous? Most jealous. That being quite clear, will you kindly spare me your attentions to Miss Arden? Please. Don't quarrel over me. Now, look here, Dorothy. I'm trying hard to be a gentleman, but it's telling on me. Now, Miss Arden's single and I'm single. If we want to flirt and hold hands, make love and get married, it's all right. But you, well, you're a married man. I'm a pretty good judge of women. What I've seen of Miss Arden, a married man wouldn't stand a chance with it. Now, you go ahead and join Vivian or your wife or whoever you want to go. I, I'm going to stay here. Carlo, Vivian loves you. She has a claim on you. You do the right thing by Vivian, and I'll do the right thing by my wife. No, no. It's awfully nice of both of you to quarrel over me like this. But after all, I'm only Miss Hepburn's secretary. You should be vying for her favors, not for mine. I have an idea. Toss the coin, and we'll see which should be with which. Great idea. It's okay with me. How about you, Dorset? No, thank you. If you prefer Mr. Tarlow, that's your privilege. You'll pardon me? Oh, I just want to take a billiard. Yeah, it's beautiful. Alone, at last. You made me win a lot of money tonight. Well, I wanted you to win a lot tonight. But it made you lose a lot. Well, I'd lose my life for you. Mr. Tarlow, you're a professional flirt. I don't think I quite understand you. No? Well, I mean, I, I don't know what you have in your mind, but I do know what I have in my heart. What? You. Oh, I've had a great many love affairs, and I, I don't know how much has been chipped off my heart, but what's left is yours wholly, completely, and forever. You really expect me to believe that? Do you think I'm insincere? I'm sure of it. Well, I wish I could say that, but I can't. I wish I wasn't in love with you, but I am. What do you mean? Well, I mean that the real joy of loving is not to be in love. I mean to say, if you're in the play, you miss the performance. If you're in the comedy, you miss the fun. Now, personally, I, I've never really been in love. But I've had all the fun out of love. But now my troubles begin. Because I am in love with you. I'm so sorry for you. So am I, believe me. I still don't believe you. Well, now look here, Miss Arden, I'm a fairly young man, a fairly good-looking man, a fairly wealthy man, and you, well, you're a dear, sweet girl working for another woman. And that woman is desperately in love with me, and yet, yet I should die of heart failure if you told me you didn't love me. Now, do you believe me? I don't know. Well, is there any reason on earth why I should tell you I loved you if I didn't? Is there any reason why I should be willing to relinquish everything that's lovely in the game of romance and ask you to marry me if I didn't love you? Now, tell me why. Well, then I must believe you. Well. Well? Well, what have you to say? Well, there's Miss Hepburn. She was kind enough to give me this position, and I... Nonsense. You serve her purpose beautifully. Now, where could she find a girl like you? Well, would it be fair to her? Fair? Where there's love, there's no conscience. Vivian has no love and no conscience. I'll explain it to you. You know Dorsey. He's here all the time. Do you, you know what we call him? I mean, the gang, in the vernacular? He's a sucker. A what? A sucker. Well, what do you think he's doing here? She took him from his family, milked him dry, and then threw him over when she thought she had another. She did not. He left her of his own accord. Furthermore, I think he's a very charming gentleman. Well, I didn't say he wasn't. I merely said he was a sucker, that was all. Well, can't a man make a fool of himself once? Oh, dear, yes. I've done it myself. With millions of women in the world, a man's lucky if he makes a fool of himself only once. You've made a fool of yourself with uh, Vivian. Oh, dear, no. You see, she was first attentive to me with the idea of adding another victim to her collection. But in this case, instead of falling in love with her, she fell in love with me. Knowing that, Mr. Tarlow, why do you continue coming here? Because I want to make a fool of her. I wanted to trim her as she's trimmed the others. What do you mean? Well, now, why talk about that? <clears throat> I love you. Do you love me? Just a minute. You're a fairly wealthy man. At least you say so. May I ask your business? Oh, dear, yes. My business is to spend money. Don't you earn it? Yes, I earn it. In what way? Well, why talk about that? I have a perfectly good income that I'm only too happy to have you enjoy. Now, what more could you ask? Well, a girl who's after a man's money wouldn't ask. But I'm not after your money. I either want you for yourself or not at all. Well, do you? Are you hiding anything from the girl you're so anxious to marry? Well, what makes you ask that? Because I think you are hiding something. Well, what? Well, just from the little things that you've said since I've been here, 
and from a bare intimation of it just now. And you are clever, but I, I'm not fooling you. Well? Well, what? Well, Guy, I like you. I like you very much. And if you'll be honest and frank with me and prove to me that you're risk telling me something you probably wouldn't tell anyone else in the whole world, I'd think I could love you. In fact, it would prove to me that you are sincere, that you love me. Now be real. Risk it and tell me. Won't you trust me, Guy? Yes, I will be real and trust you because I do love you and I want you to love me. So here's my story. Marion, may I? I've made my money divorcing women like Vivian from what they squeeze from suckers like Dorsey. <laughs> now, a man could do worse than that, couldn't he? Guy. You mean you're a thief by profession? No. I mean I'm a thief by destiny. You see, when I left college, I was left a lot of money. A woman like Vivian turned a nasty trick on me. In three months, she had all my money, and I... Well, they sent me to the hospital, but I was young and strong, and I got over it all right. But I left that hospital with a bitter hatred for women like Vivian and all her kind. And ever since then, I've been treading this little planet as a sort of uh, nemesis. Every time one of them trims a man like Dorsey, some invisible power puts her in my way. She invariably falls in love. Of course, that's not my fault. But it makes matters just that much easier. I've cleaned up a neat little fortune out of the Vivians. I've robbed them with the greatest of ease. And I came here to swell it. What a trimming I'm going to give that female Jessie James. Did you know there was a safe behind that picture? Well, I advised her to put a safe in the house. You? Certainly. Times have been panicky. I also had to turn a lot of things into securities that could be liquidated at a moment's notice, and it's all in there. Stocks, liberty bonds, cash, jewelry, everything. I was just about to bundle it all up and take it away when you came and found the real combination to my heart. I'll never forgive you for that. I'd love to punish her as she deserves. You mean you know the combination of that safe? No, the combination. I bought the safe and sent it to her for a gift. And you really intend to rob her of everything? Everything but her wardrobe, and I think it's vulgar to carry bundles. Now you see me stripped to the skin. My heart lies there. Put a knife in it, if you will, but of one thing rest assured, I'll never touch that safe. Meeting you here has been compensation enough. Lucky Vivian. Now, do you believe me? Yes. But, Guy, you must give up on I'll this. I'll never touch another thing. I'll be so grateful for your love that I couldn't harm any woman, not even Vivian. Oh, you're a dear. Can you love me? Yes. Can you marry me? Yes. But what are we going to do with Vivian? She'll make a lot of trouble. Well, I'm not afraid of her. You? It worries me. Worries you? Well, I wouldn't let it worry you for a moment. Would you, uh, Would you like to have me tell her now? Yes. Now. Right now? Mm. I think you'd better tell her. No, I mean, you, you, you can uh, tell her without hurting her so much. I won't hurt her. Much. Oh, Vivian, would you mind stepping in here just a minute? It, it's important, if you will. Uh, little Miss Arden wanted to say that... Uh... What's the matter? May I have that cue a minute, please? <laughs> Go ahead now. Miss Hepburn, I decided to leave you. Leave me? But I thought you were happy here. Yes, but things have happened since. I'm going to be married. Oh, then I was right about Andy. <laughs> no, it isn't Andy. Well, if it isn't Andy, whom? It can't be the judge. He's a one woman man. No, it isn't the judge. <laughs> well, it can't be Guy. Who is it? Why can't it be Guy? Oh, because Guy loves me. But Guy is going to marry me. Oh, you're joking. I'm not joking. What is it in this, Guy? Everything. You're going to marry Miss Arden? I certainly am. Oh, I don't believe it. You're, you're playing one of your practical jokes. Well, all marriages are practical jokes. Don't be flippant. 
Do you mean it or don't you? I'm afraid we do. You contemptible little sneak. You knew that I loved Guy more than anything in the world, and yet you deliberately tried to win his love. Yes. You have a right to your love. I have a right to mine. You've no right not to Guy. You've no right to step in where another woman is concerned. If you sneaked up to my room at night and put a knife into me, I'd prefer it. Why didn't you rather kill me? Because I couldn't have married Guy if I killed you. You miserable little thief. If I'm a thief, then you're an assassin. I've stolen one man. You've stolen a dozen. Yes, I took Guy from you, but he was single. You've stolen a dozen men who were married. You've stolen them from their wives who loved them and from their babies who loved them. And for what? Not for love, but for money. I have no scruples in stealing Guy from you. I only hope you suffer hard enough. What do you mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. What was Andrew Dorsey when you met him? A married man, a decent husband, a father, an honorable businessman. You knew that and you stole him. What is he now? A bankrupt, deserted by his wife, deserted by his friends, a failure in every way. You call me a thief. What do you think his wife would call you? You stole Dorsey when his wife was away. I stole Guy right before your eyes. But I was fair. Your heart's broken. You haven't any heart to break. You! You pack up and get out of my house. I'll go presently. You pack up and get out now, now. If you stay here, I'll kill you. I'm not afraid of you. I'll go when I'm ready. What's the matter? I've been sheltering a snake under my roof. Who? This woman here. She came here and stole the one thing in the world I really wanted. She and Guy are going to be married. Now, you be careful what you say about her. Vivian, I love Marion. I commit a crime for her. Get out! I'll kill you! I'll kill you both! I'll kill you! Mr. Charles, may I speak to Miss Arden alone for a moment, please? Do you mind, Guy? Not at all. Yes. You don't love Tarlow. I do. I do, and I'm going to marry him. Do you mean that, Marion? Very well. Then you can do as you wish. If you want a divorce, I'll give it to you. I was the first to make the break, and so, of course, I must pay the piper. Tarlow. Congratulations. I won't take up any more of your precious time. You have a wonderful girl, and I hope you're going to make her very happy. I've just had a terrible time with Vivian. I took her gun away from her. She's in a dangerous mood, so be very careful, Miss Arden. I'll take her down in the car and ride her around for a while until you can get away. But don't say anything at all. Listen, my girl, if I find you here when I return, don't blame me if I do stop you with no, both no, regrets. No, that's all. Don't I'll get them. I'll get them. I'll get them. She'd only think of the people in the next apartment. Guy. I have an idea. What? Let's not spare Vivian. What do you mean? We're going to start life together, you and I. Yes? Well, then let's make a good start. Take everything Vivian has and that's safe. Why, you don't mean... Yes, I mean it. And you want me to go... Or I swear I won't marry you. What a wonderful girl you are. You said you knew the combination of the safe. Do you know how to open that picture? Don't make yourself ridiculous. Of course I know how to open the picture. Well, get to work quickly, then. I'll get a handbag to put the bag in. I won't be a second. Here, all of Couldn't you get anything larger? Hello? Columbus, 1212. Don't leave her a piece of blank paper. I'll take the safe. Hello? Park Avenue Garage? This is Miss Arden. Send a taxi over right away. Miss Kaplan. Yes, Kaplan. As quickly as you can. Why didn't you charge that? Wait a minute, I want to get my overcoat. Wait, Guy. I need a wrap, too. Run upstairs and get me something. Any, I won't anything. I want you half a second. Marion. 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 I... Marion. Holy mackerel, she's a crook herself.
Never mind about that. Follow that black and white cab. Come on. The neighborhood to take my coat. you a present. What? Enough cash to meet all your obligations. Cash. Bonds. Jewelry. More jewelry. Bonds. What is all this? Miss Vivian Hepburn's fortune. All of it, I hope. How did you get it? I made it in tips. But have you gone out of your mind? Don't you realize she's sure to find out? Of course she will. I want her to. I went there to bankrupt her as she bankrupted you. To break her heart as she broke my heart. And above all things, to save your name. My name. Our boy's name. What are you going to do with it? Keep it. That's larceny. Grand larceny. I know it. Don't you see that you got yourself into a worse mess than I did? She can send you to prison. And she will. We'll see. There they are now. I'll wait right here, if you don't mind. Andy, I knew this was your address. This woman robbed my safe. We followed her here. She's nothing but a common thief, planted in my house by a gang. We followed the taxi to this address, Darcy. You're foolish to try and protect her under the circumstances. So you did rob my safe. I did. And I'm rather proud of the job. Oh, you're very original. You boast of robbery. I robbed you. But Mr. Darcy is the real thief. Is it possible, Andy, you're a member of a gang? He's a member of a gang who robbed their wives and turned it over to women like you. What do you mean? I mean that I am Mrs. Andrew Dorsey. This woman is your wife? Yes, Mary is my wife. Well, when you found your wife in my house, why didn't you tell me? Because Mrs. Dorsey asked me not to disclose her identity. Do you think it was fair to allow her to steal into my home and rob me behind my back? You stepped into my home and robbed me behind my back? Just on as a raven. Judge, I took her property, and I can return it to her if I want to, but I won't. What she took from me, she hasn't the power to return, even if she wanted to. She's taken from me what I value above everything but you. Isn't that larceny? Such larceny is lawful. Then I can do nothing. Nothing. I suppose you think the law will acquit you because I stole your husband. But what about Guy? You talk of stealing a man. Guy and I are about to be married. Didn't you practically steal my husband? I did. I wanted to prove to you that women of your kind don't hold a monopoly on the affections of men. Sometimes even a humble wife can steal a man, and steal him from an experienced woman like yourself. Are you going to marry Guy? I don't know. Guy! Guy! Hello, everybody. How are you, sweetheart? Why didn't you wait? Uh, I'm sorry, Guy, but I was in a hurry. Yes, I noticed that. Guy, Miss Arden is not your sweetheart. She's Mrs. Dorsey, Mr. Dorsey's wife. You're Mr. Dorsey's divorced wife? No, I'm, I'm his married wife. Now you understand why I didn't wait? Yes, I understand perfectly now. She doesn't want you. She's a married woman. I've been loved by married women before. Are you going back to your husband? No, I'm going to divorce Mr. Dorsey. But, Guy, I've decided not to marry again. Do you mean that, Marion? Yes, I mean it. Well, when did you come to this unfortunate decision? About an hour ago. You know, Guy, women will change their minds. Yes, you can't tell me anything new about women. 
I can tell you something new about one woman. Your little friend Vivian is not only a heart shark, but she's a card shark, and she plays crooked at both games. Mr. You prove that. You cheat at love and you cheat at cards. Your brain's crooked and your wheel's crooked and your heart's loaded and your dice are loaded. Your soul's marked and your cards are marked. You prove that or I'll... I'll prove it right now. These are your cards, aren't they? Miss Will, she gave them to me. Listen to this. To my clever secretary, Miss Marion Arden, I give this my lucky deck with which I've never lost a game, Vivian Hepburn. Well, what if I did? These cards are marked. Marked? Marked. They're readers with which you've been cheating your fool. Prove it. Judge Perry, would you mind shuffling those any way you like? The first card. The Ace of Spades. The Queen of Diamonds. The Jack of Hearts. Is that sufficient proof that they're marked? Well, it is for me. Vivian, I've watched you wreck your life and the lives of others. I've hoped that the girl that I used to know would ultimately assert herself. But when you descend to this, I give up. Cheating at cards with intent to defraud is larceny. And that isn't lawful larceny. And you don't expect me to maintain a great big home for the pure delight of men who are bored with their wives and wives who are bored with their husbands, do you? It costs a fortune to run my home. And I worry how to pay expenses. I have no man to slave for me. I have to slave for myself. Oh, yes, I bled you. I bled you for a short time. But your wife, oh, your wife's gonna bleed you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Would you mind telling me where you buy these cars? Oh, shut up. She has learned a lesson she'll never forget. You're a dear woman, Mrs. Darcy. Women like Vivian can spin men's heads around, but women like you spin the world around. Thank you, Judge. Goodbye. Goodbye. Do you mind if I have my coat? Oh. Uh, well, <clears throat> there's, uh, there's nothing to do now. There's no safe here. Are you going to put one in the house to keep Vivian's fortune in? I'm going to keep what my husband lost, and the rest I'll return to Miss Hepburn. Then I'd better continue my visits to Vivian. Guy, you wouldn't do that. You don't want me to? Well, I guess you've even scores with the Vivians for me. Congratulations, old man. On what? On having the finest little wife in the world. A little while ago, she was mine. Now she's yours. She isn't mine. You heard her say she's going to divorce me. She didn't mean that. You're a regular fellow. Human. But regular. Isn't he? But I'm going to divorce him just the same. My sympathy, Dorset. Well, if you're ever shy a man, you'll find me in a modest little home not far from here. Close to Vivian? Man keeps his home far away from his apartment. Guy, I appreciate you with all my heart. And I love you with all my heart and soul. Marion, can't you forget and start over again? I can't remain your wife, at least not for the present. Well, couldn't we live here just as friends, you and I and the boy? As friends? I wonder. Would you play the game, Andrew? You can trust me. If you take advantage of the fact of my living no, here, I'll... No, I won't. I promise to resist you. All right. Just friends, then. You promised to resist me. Well, I am resisting you, like everything. <laughs> 